scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. If you understand man, you will now know why man perpetually needs to live in the reality of God's mercy. Are we learning already? So that there are three expressions, doctrinally speaking, if we are to do justice to the subject of mercy, we must understand theology, the nature of God. Number two, we must understand anthropology, the nature of man. Number three, we have to understand soteriology. Soteriology is the entire discourse of the plan of salvation. Because the salvation of man is the zenith of the demonstration of God's mercy. Are we learning? so we have theology the study of god anthropology the study of man and then soteriology the study of salvation beginning from the fall of man and so we follow through the law the prophets then jesus then the implication of all that jesus came to do that was captured in salvation hallelujah but for the time that i have i would just want to touch a bit on the nature of God and then the nature of man then we try to tie up I just want to introduce from my session the concept of mercy so that we will understand the foundation and the basis for mercy I hope that in the session tomorrow we would now consider the administration of mercy the spiritual system by which mercy is administered are we together praise the name of the Lord Let's look at two scriptures. Psalm 51 and verse 1. Popular scripture on mercy. Psalm 51 and verse 1. It says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. Take note of that. So your mercy is tied to your loving kindness. It says, According to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgression scripture number two nehemiah chapter 9 from verse 30 please write it down nehemiah chapter 9 from verse 30 and 31 or let's look at 31 for sake of time it says nevertheless for thy great mercy's sake thou did not utterly consume them nor forsake them for thou art a gracious and merciful god this is the reason why they became recipients of mercy more than their desire to obtain mercy there is something about your nature that you are a merciful and a gracious god are we learning one last scripture psalms 13 and verse 15 just to set a foundation and then we'll go into the discussion of the nature verse 5 psalm 13 and verse 5 please but i have trusted in thy mercy therefore my heart shall rejoice in your salvation i have trusted in your mercy therefore my heart shall rejoice in your salvation let's examine the nature of god in an attempt to understand the basis for this mysterious um, subject of mercy 
not necessarily mysterious as though it were desired to be hidden but that it takes spiritual intelligence and illumination to really understand mercy as simple as the concept sounds um, we can be around it and never truly understand it appreciate it or know how to partake of it in experience so let's examine the nature of god the bible tells us very clearly according to first john chapter 4 and verse 8 this biblically speaking is about the most striking character of god it says god is love please say it after me god one more time please we're examining the nature of god the bible lets us know that god is love he does not just love god is love it's not just what he does it is who he is are we learning now god is love psalms 45 from verse 8 and 9 psalm 145 i meant to say 145 psalm 145 8 and 9 it says the lord is gracious and full of compassion these are descriptions he's helping you understand the nature of this god the lord is gracious it says and full of compassion that he is slow to anger and of great mercy verse 9 it says the lord is good to how many this is the extent of his benevolence that in communicating compassion and mercy he does not spare he is good to all and that his tender mercies are over all his works hallelujah in genesis chapter 34 genesis chapter 34 we'll read verse 5 and 6 this was moses up mount sinai when he was having a conversation with god over the issue of the commandments genesis 34 did i get that right please help me five and six is it exodus exodus 34 forgive me please exodus thank you i said genesis exodus please correct it the lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there this was moses now up man sinai and proclaimed the name of the lord what did he say the lord passed before him and proclaimed the lord the lord god merciful and gracious long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth these are all scriptures that attempt to describe the nature of god so we see that god is love we see that god is full of compassion he is slow to anger he is rich in love and that his mercy is over all his works now let's study very quickly the nature of man now that we have had a fair idea about god as far as his nature is concerned that his love he's merciful he's compassionate let's look at man psalm 51 and verse 5 mm. behold i was shapen in iniquity ladies and gentlemen this is an attempt to describe man and in sin did my mother conceive me very very interesting no just keep verse 5 he says that i was shapen in iniquity do you know what iniquity is iniquity is not seen as you can see here the bible gives a difference iniquity comes from the the the, the greek word is a one and it means an inherent flaw that there is already a default a default in character inherently are we together now this is the state of the fallen man he says i was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me jeremiah 17 and verse 9 popular scripture jeremiah 17 and verse 9 
Here's what the Bible says about the heart of man. That the heart is deceitful above all things. For you to appreciate this scripture, you have to find out what else is deceptive. The Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things. That means it is not the only thing that is deceitful. But compared to every other thing that deceives, the heart is deceitful above all things. And desperately wicked. Who can know it? This is a description, an x-ray into the heart of man. And the Bible says the heart of man by default, outside of the influence of God's mercy, is deceitful even to the owner of the heart. Are we learning? Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5. This was a painful assessment of man. When you read from verse 1, the Bible now begins to tell you that when men multiplied, you know, and filled the face of the earth, daughters were born to them and all of that, the, the, the encounter between the, um, those, we, those we call the fallen angels and the daughters of men, the Bible calls them sons of God, benign Elohim, that is the word. You see, and then it says that they saw the daughters of men and so on and so forth. When we get to verse 6, verse 6, uh, in fact, the Bible says, let's look at 5. God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Who saw? This is God assessing man from his standpoint. That he saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil. How long? Continually. Verse 6. And it repented God that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. So we see that man out of the in, outside the influence of God's grace and mercy has nothing, absolutely nothing, that is commendable. Every scripture that describes man is a story of pain and war, the foolishness, the, the deceptiveness of the heart of man. Like I said earlier on, when we understand the nature of God, and we can contrast it with the nature of man, then we can now begin to appreciate the concept of his mercy hallelujah according to scripture i wrote something down here you may want to pay attention to it any action you take that is motivated by compassion is generally called mercy any action that is motivated by compassion the bible tells us that the lord is gracious he is full of compassion and that is the reason why he is able to show mercy may i define mercy therefore let me give you three definitions very quickly and then we'll just tie up a few things and pray are we learning number one mercy here i wrote is compassionate treatment of those who are in distress the first definition of mercy here compassionate treatment because as we'll be learning mercy is not just um from god towards man and god towards creation mercy also extends from man to man are we together if our idea of mercy just stops from god to man then it is not complete because the bible says blessed are the merciful for they shall be shown are we together now so compassionate treatment of those in distress is called mercy that means when you communicate compassion to those who are in any kind of distress it is called mercy number two the second definition of mercy here is refraining from harm or punishing offenders that means when you refrain from administering harm or punishment to one who is guilty, you have shown mercy. Are we learning now? So mercy 
is refraining from harming or punishing an offender one who is guilty generally speaking now the degree to which you refrain from harming or administering punishment to one who is guilty is called mercy one final definition the disposition to be forgiving to pity or to be kind the disposition to be forgiving to pity or to be kind the disposition to be forgiving to pity or to be kind is called mercy in fact can i add one more definition to it showing care and providing relief is called mercy showing care and providing relief as we are going to be learning the healing ministry is administered under the mercy of god you see that now the entire scope of not just salvation from sin the healing anything that is administered to man that provides relief is sponsored by the mercy of god so you can now understand why blind Bartimaeus did not say son of man heal me uh -uh. he said son of man thou son of david have mercy because what i am looking for is only activated in the presence of your mercy mercy compassionate treatment of those in distress refraining from harming or punishing offenders or they that are guilty the disposition to be forgiving the disposition to pity or to be kind and then finally showing care and providing relief all of these definitions is safe to call every one of these definitions an appropriate definition of mercy we see from all these definitions that there are two expressions of mercy number one the first expression deals with forgiveness or withholding punishment broadly speaking now that whenever we talk about mercy there are two main expressions with based on all these definitions number one is forgiveness or withholding punishment that is the first expression of mercy the second is alleviating pain alleviating distress providing relief from suffering please follow very carefully now we're building now that every time we're discussing the subject of mercy from a kingdom perspective there are two broad angles to it number one it has to do with forgiveness withholding punishment from he or them that are deserving of it the guilty and then number two alleviating pain distress and providing relief from suffering in the kingdom when we talk about mercy your mind must be able to see it from the lens of these two perspectives every time god administers mercy he is doing one of two things number one he is forgiving or withholding punishment from a people who are deserving of it or number two he is alleviating pain distress and providing relief from suffering are you learning why do you need to know this so that number one you will appreciate the concept of mercy then you will know how to receive the administration of that mercy in your life and then you will also know how to communicate mercy because if you know that mercy is two-dimensional it has to do with forgiveness and it has to do with relieving of pain and distress so when the bible says blessed are the merciful now you know what he's saying that blessed are those who are apt to forgive blessed are those who are, are very very insistent 
in withholding punishment from them that are deserving and then blessed are they that support the freedom of men from pain from relief that means the healing ministry is the ministry of mercy the evangelistic ministry is the ministry of mercy blessed are the merciful we'll leave that for tomorrow but just for you to really be able to understand so that it does not become an abstract concept mercy goes beyond pardon from sin pardon from sin is wonderful but even in the faith you will still need to operate by that understanding of mercy mercy is not just for sinners it is the basis for doing business with god in this kingdom are we together now yeah write this down please the foundation and the basis for mercy is compassion the foundation and the basis for mercy is compassion that means it is impossible to administer mercy mercy is the fruit of compassion the foundation and the basis for mercy is compassion love what is compassion sympathy pity concern for the sufferings or the misfortune of others it is impossible to administer mercy until you have compassion now listen very carefully compassion has to do with feelings mercy has to do with action you see that when compassion is emotion it is no longer called compassion it is called mercy mercy is the fruit of compassion hmm. when it has to do with mercy the bible uses the expression show mercy or have mercy it does not say think mercy it does not say feel mercy because mercy is always action thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time to favor her yea the set time thou son of david have mercy on me are we learning so the foundation for mercy is compassion love it is impossible to be able to administer mercy except you have love the reason why god is merciful is because god is love the reason why man can be merciful is because man is also a a recipient of that love nature and if allowed to be activated through faith then you can also be an administrator of mercy So why are we bankrupt of mercy in our world today? From a standpoint of men to men. The simple reason is because we do not dwell in love. Let me define for you. Let me give you my definition of love. I've studied a bit on the subject of love, believe me. And here is my conclusion. Love is the absence of self. That is it. You can literally gauge love to the degree to which self is not there. And you can gauge lack of love. You can use the index of self as the ultimate test. Love is the absence of self. More than a feeling, more than the emotional construct of your heart. You can know whether love is present in a place by checking whether self is there love and self is like light and darkness the moment there is self there cannot be love god's love so true love is the absence of self in fact listen the nature of love mandates that you cannot find fulfillment until you communicate that love to an object outside of you the very character of true love mandates that you cannot derive satisfaction 
in just loving yourself you must communicate that love to an object outside you to be satisfied that is why naturally speaking the character of love is that it gives for god so loved the world that he forget about what he gave just know that he gave so anything you so love you must give to it if you so love a vision you give to it your time your intelligence if you so love god you give to it if you so love your spouse you give giving when giving is absent there is no love god so loved the world that he gave he gave many things ultimately his son he gave us his spirit he gave us his life he gave us access to every spiritual blessing that resides in the heavenly places the bible says god so loved that he gave mercy is a fruit of compassion so the real prayer is not make me merciful uh -uh. the real prayer is that the love of jesus and his compassion will grow that we will grow in love because when you grow in love truthfully it will become natural to communicate mercy are we together yes most times you would see in jesus's healing meetings the bible would say he was moved with compassion not moved with power he was moved with compassion he looked at the people and saw them like sheep without a shepherd jesus wept twice in the bible one of it was at the tomb of lazarus the other was when he looked at jerusalem the bible says he wept over them and said jerusalem jerusalem if you had known even in this your time the things that pertain for your peace but now they are hid from you Praise the name of the Lord. The foundation for biblical mercy is compassion. Did I define compassion? The Bible defines it. And here's my definition of compassion. The ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity is called compassion. The ability, say for we do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity it is the reason why even when jesus was done the work of salvation was over he still went to heaven as a man and he sat down there and continued a ministry of intercession not for himself for the saints because the character of love is that it finds satisfaction bringing joy to an object outside of itself he's seated at the right hand of the father and he makes intercession do you know how his intercession is sponsored by his compassion more than his power that means he looks at the father and says father if i did not become a man it would be easy for me to blame these people but i i am a man i know what it means to be hated for a right cause that is the basis of his intercession he has been there he was hated for no cause he blessed people and they said crucify him they ate of his bread ate the fish and they still said crucify him so when he sees someone who is loved for serving god and persecuted in a family his intercessory ministry is based on the fact that there is a point of contact can you can i tell you this one of the ways that god makes great people is to allow them go through several things that connect them with the feelings of the people they will be helping in future so that when you stand before people he may not necessarily cause the tragedies but in his wisdom he can walk out a way so when you are a great person either as a leader a man of god a businessman part of the many reasons why you are great is because your life is full of stories there are memories that connect you to several angles of people's pain so many times when people are shouting you say leave them and they say sir i i leave them should we command fire down and jesus said no do you not know what spirit you are of you know people who have grown because their lives are full of history god has brought them through seasons and they have been they have been in touch with several levels of pain disappointment shame they understand the nature of man nothing surprises them again hmm. 
Are you learning? Yes. So Jesus is in heaven. He's making intercession. And the basis of his intercession is that as a high priest, he, even though he is the son of the living God, he was subject to like passion. He was hungry. He was thirsty. Jesus tasted lack. He was hungry and the Bible did not hide it. That he went to a tree hoping to get food. Is it in your Bible? And that he did not get the food. He did not just say, tree, I love you. He expressed his frustration in the presence of tiredness. So when he sees weariness on earth, he can connect to it. The preacher is not a bad man. He's just weary. Five years without results, that human nature is crying. And that becomes the basis of his compassion. His intercession. When, listen, there is a way you become too innocent, you cannot really administer mercy. Because you have been shielded from too many things in life. So it is difficult for you to connect with people's pain and tears. Why is the preacher shouting like that? What is there in persecution, you say? What is there in losing in this business? You just lost one billion. So what? Just pray and God will help you. When you see great people keep quiet, it's proof of growth. They, there are stories in their lives that can connect to the pain of the people they are ministering to. Let me tell you this. If you study the dynamics of the anointing, you find out that your pain is a gift because that becomes the door. Do you know why Jesus in heaven today still has the scars on his hand? You would think one who resurrected by the power of the spirit, all those scars should heal. That scar that was a symbol of shame today is the basis of his honor. Every time he looks at those hands, they remind him of his, of his compassion, the frailty of man. So he deals with us from the lens of his compassion. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, the lifter up of my head. You see, when I pray for the sick and I minister, I don't just minister because the Bible says to do it. I have been sick before. Really, really sick. I've been diagnosed with conditions that were not good. And the Lord preserve the pain of that experience. And that becomes the sponsor and the trigger to the anointing. When I see someone going through pain today, it is not just because the Bible says to heal and to pray for the person. There is, there is I, have, I have in the archives of my life, there is, there is the gift of pain that was taught. And it today becomes the basis it sponsors patience. It sponsors forbearance. When you see people who do not show mercy in our life, in our world today, there are only two explanations. Number one, they are children. Or number two, they have not really faced the reality of life. You see that the older people are, even those who were temperous when they were young, something happens to them. They become like children again. Because 50 years of living in this wicked world should teach you a lesson whether you are ready to learn or not. It teaches you so many things. So when they brought the woman who was caught in adultery, in the very act, the Bible says, interesting that they didn't bring the man. You don't commit adultery with yourself. And yet they spared the man and dragged the woman threw her before Jesus and said, this woman was caught in the very act. What do you say? If you come as a prophet, you cannot fight other prophets before you. So let's hear what you will say. And Jesus was writing on the ground. And here's what he said. He didn't say, I am Jesus. He didn't say, leave me alone. He said, he, among all of you who are standing here, based on the nature of man, he who does not have sin stone her and the bible says they were convicted from the oldest next verse 
from the who? They were convicted by their own conscience, one by one, beginning from the one who had lived longest on earth. He had more stories, and he reminded him, Mr. Man, you've lived long in this earth. Are you saying you've lived so long and you've not become wise by reason of experience? Rabbi, are you that innocent? And the Bible says one by one. That one statement was a message. Reminding all of them of their desperate need for mercy. And the Bible says on the basis of that, they left. And he said, woman, where are your accusers? Where are they? One revelation drove them away. So one of the ways to drive accusers is to remind them that every time you point fingers at people, it lets you know that based on the standpoint of man, unassisted by God, nobody has the moral credence. Nobody has the moral credence to point an accusing finger against any woman. Where are thine accusers? And he said, go, see no more. And the woman left. She left justified. He said, neither do I condemn you. Go and see no more. Hallelujah. Man at his best is still flawed based on God's standard. This is an uncomfortable truth we must admit. It says, in sin did my mother conceive me. So before acting out anything, the justice system of God already declares that you are not qualified. You do not meet that standard. Because you see, the condition to carry the righteousness of God or the condition to carry the life of God and the Holy Spirit is that you must have righteousness equal to that of Jesus. Not like, equal to that of Jesus. The Holy Spirit only honors whoever carries the righteousness of Jesus. And every attempt by man to match up to that standard, the Bible says that our righteousness corporately is as filthy rags. Are we together? Yes. So the basis and the foundation for mercy is compassion. 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 When you see what Jesus has done in your own life, when you see the depth of his love, the Bible says what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us in that we be called the sons of God. And the whole process that led to you being the son of God, Jesus Christ, hung upon the cross, went through that nature. When you remember it, he's telling you that the guys who brought the woman who was caught in adultery, there was something they forgot that gave them the energy to drag that woman. That if you remember, you will be very slow to anger. You see that? Yeah. One of the ways that the spirit of anger works is that it traps away your thoughtfulness. It takes away your ability to think so that you just act without thinking because the moment you can be thoughtful, somewhere in your life you will remember that from January last year to December, how long did I experience the mercy and the kindness of God? And your answer will be every month and every day and every week based on that you see that yeah when you pass a road and see a prayer warrior's car inside a ditch and you who did not open your bible for one month you pass safely and you go he reminds you by that experience that it is of the lord's mercy that we are not consumed when you see all your believing neighbors struggling with COVID and crying, and you who was running around and breaking every rule you know, both human, governmental, divine, and yet God kept you, you will not credit that to your righteousness. Very quickly you will know how to admit. The key to understanding mercy is to contrast God's love and man's, man's failure, man's inability to help himself.
while I was just seated at the, the rotunda there just listening to you sing, I heard you sing that song, I'm the one you have shown mercy. And it really touched my heart because I was praying. I said, Lord, may they listen to what they are saying. You look beyond me. Oh. That's what I want you to think about. You look beyond me. Oh. Leave the other part of the song. You know it. That was the basis. That he looked beyond me. Oh. So what did he look at? If you look beyond me, what was beyond me that you looked at that became the basis of the mercy? Because if you looked at me, all that you would see is that which is deserving of condemnation and destruction. Very wise scripture based song. Beyond me. To who? Who did he look at that suddenly made me not to become an object of his wrath? What did he see? I'm interested in what he saw. What did he see that suddenly made a criminal not to be a criminal again? What did he see that made someone who would have walked in a course all the days of his life? What did he see? He looked beyond me. Oh. Beyond. You looked beyond me. Oh. Please take it higher for me. Leave all the parts you look past this and that, whatever he looked at. Just my own is that he looked beyond me. If I'm paying attention to this dear man of God seated in front here and I'm looking at you and then all of a sudden I don't focus on you again. You see me looking. That means something else has stolen my attention. Assuming I want to punish you and suddenly I turn and I start laughing. What happened? That means there is a conversation behind you that you're not even aware of. You look beyond me, oh. You look beyond me, oh. That I'm the one you have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. Can I tell you this? Honestly, when you understand the mercy of God, sometimes you will even be embarrassed sharing testimonies it will take the grace of god because you know that there is somewhere in that equation that you don't understand how the answer fully came there was a gap in that equation yes i prayed yes i fasted yes i walked in keeping with what the bible says but but oh peter there are times you can fish there are times you will go to the sea where fish should be. There are times your boat can be fine. There are times your net is good. Yet, you will not catch fish. At that point, it was not your skill that went wrong. You went to the sea like you should go. You went with a boat like you should have. You went with a net that was functioning. At that point, you don't need skill again. You need the one who can administer mercy. Remember my definition of mercy? To take away that pain. He said cast your net to the right side and he caught fish and the moment peter caught fish do you know what happened to him when you look at the, the account in john 21 the moment he caught fish he didn't call him a sinner peter said go away from me i'm a sinner there was something about the administration of mercy that brought conviction he didn't say peter you are a sinner no cast your net to the right side You've done your best. Let me show you that I can look beyond you. When people see what God is doing in and through my life, many times people ask me what is the secret. And it's a very difficult question to answer. Because one, I don't tell lies. And two, I, I want to tell the whole truth. But the truth is that there are gaps in this thing. Ours is to keep walking in keeping with the truths that scripture provides. But there is an equation, there is a gap in the equation of a man's destiny. 
that only the size of God can fill. One plus one according to mathematics should be two. If your one plus one is zero, the thief is there in that equation because he's the one who takes. But if one plus one suddenly becomes one million, you need to check. That means it's not only one plus one that is there. One plus one plus Jesus equals to whatever answer he puts there. Listen to me. Because we live in an arrogant world that prides in beating your chest. There is a healthy divide between confidence and arrogance. We make our boast only in the Lord that we are recipients of his mercy. But chances are excellent that when God begins to do great and mighty things in and through our lives, when the spotlight is on you, chances are excellent that you don't want to just go out of that spotlight and allow Jesus to be glorified. So it's easy we can say, I did this, I did that. But there are those who know. Ah, you look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and poured your love. You look beyond me. Oh. You look beyond me. Oh. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and poured your love. You look beyond me. The basis for genuine mercy is compassion. The real prayer is not to be merciful. The real prayer is that the love of Jesus and his compassion the fortitude to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity. When that happens to you, when you hear that someone's house is on fire, you don't start asking questions like, who was careless there? You run quickly. Because you know that except the Lord watches over a city, there can be watchmen, but they will watch in vain. The Bible says it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night. Only to eat the bread of sorrow. It is only God that gives his beloved sleep. Have you seen families that were well cultured and disciplined, took care of their children, prayed and fasted every month, yet the children eventually became like drug barons and armed robbers? You can't say they didn't give their best. The parents will tell you, I gave my children the, the, the training of a man of God as children. And yet you see another rough family somewhere where they only see at the end of the day. Once it's morning, nobody knows where whoever is. We only verify that by 11.30 at least everyone is back home. And in the midst of it, a scattered visionless young, vicious, visionless young boy, while he's moving around, he will meander into a church, one revival program somewhere, and fire falls upon the head of that small boy. Ten years later, he now becomes a great man who is going to help the family that seemed well cultured and trained. How about a sincere lady who keeps herself loving Jesus and then is raped by some criminals? And then a bad girl who keeps going from left, right and center. And at the end of it, it looks as if she's never done anything wrong. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you this. The mercy of God is not a license for licentiousness. But I can tell you this. When you look at your life and you are thoughtful, at the end of it, there is only one sentence that will come out of your mouth. Thank you, Jesus. I am truly a product of your mercy. There are people here, you probably lost your job years, maybe two, three, four years, and yet you've not had to beg. You were even giving out some money to others who are working. And you cannot really tell how quarter to shame that mercy comes again. The mercy of God is the fruit of his love. Please do not forget this simple message this afternoon. I'm introducing for you the concept of mercy from a kingdom standpoint. That there are two dimensions to the mercy of God. 
his ability to forgive and to pardon and his ability to take away pain and relief they are all administered by his mercy and that his mercy comes from his compassion the mercy that flows from your life to others will also come from a standpoint of compassion compassion so when god instructs you to set up a charity organization say for instance and help the poor and the needy ambition will not take you so far you will be tired one day but if it comes from compassion you will remember it would have been me you will master the ability to put yourself in the position of many people and you will find out that you will live a profoundly compassionate life administering the mercy of god where then is our boasting where then is our pride where then is the self-glorification we are absolutely recipients of his mercy his grace his compassion this is the revelation that i live with honestly speaking i'm not just saying this because i'm standing and i'm preaching it is it is my it is the construct of my understanding we're going to pray by his mercy he's treated you beyond what you deserved by his mercy he's shown forgiveness he's withheld punishments by his mercy he's alleviated pain stress and as we'll be learning tomorrow i'll be teaching us the administration of god's mercy because you see as free as god's mercy is sadly not everyone will truly be a recipient of that mercy you will find out that as free as the mercy of god is there is a system of administration the bible says let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace listen carefully it says we may obtain obtain means receive and anything that is given to you there is a skill to receive in it if you do not know how to receive you cannot have because the law is that you only have what you receive mark 11 23 and 24 jesus was teaching us how to receive and then in verse 24 he says verily verily i say unto you 24 now therefore i say unto you he says what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shalt have them receiving and having are two different things you only have what you have received if you have not received it you cannot have it receiving is spiritual having is the manifestation physically the bible says we should come boldly to obtain mercy to obtain mercy to obtain mercy please rise up on your feet your grace your grace i'm nothing without you your grace your grace shines on me are you crying before the god of heaven your grace your grace i'm nothing without you your grace your grace shines on me there are many of you the reason why prophecy has not happened in your life is not because the man of god who spoke lied the posture of brokenness that must give way for the mercy of god to come you have been delaying the manifestation of prophecy because there is no brokenness a broken and a contrite spirit thou will not despise someone is crying to God please forget about who is by your left and right if you are too big to cry for the grace to be broken then I tell you forget about the mercy of God hmm 
He said, if my people who are called by my name, the first thing is they shall humble themselves. They are my people, but they will never see my outstretched hand until they humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turning from their wicked ways. He says, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their land. Please swallow your pride tonight. Please swallow your pride tonight. I respect your pedigree. But like the 20 and 4 elders, remove your golden crown and cry before the maker. Please pray one more minute. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till your work on earth is done. Cheap victories that you would have received, but because the mercy of God kept coming to your house, kept coming to your business. The mercy of God kept coming to your ministry, kept coming to your job, but it kept returning because it did not find brokenness. Don't let it return again. It came 2015. Pride and arrogance did not allow the mercy of God rest upon you. 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019. 2020 2021 here is your chance again win that war of destiny once and for all lord if you don't help my children i don't have the power to help them lord if you don't help my business i don't have the power to help if you don't help me from this addiction i don't have the power to save myself if you don't help me from this financial situation the bills that are on me will destroy me. Thou son of David, here at this conference, have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon my children. Have mercy upon the works of my hands. A broken and a contrite spirit, O oh God, thou wilt not despise. hallelujah listen we're wrapping up i'm going to pray over your request now true story i know a woman who was diagnosed with cancer and they had done everything they knew to do she was afraid of chemotherapy because i think she had read all kinds of things online that it does not guarantee survival and i stand before the god of heaven and i'm telling you this story this woman went out of her way at a point she said according to her she was listening to one of my teachings and she decided to spend a, to have a personal vigil with God not asking for anything just rolling and crying and say Lord I'm not afraid of dying but please if I am going to die please arise for my children this is all I am asking and the Bible, I mean the woman, <laughs> I said the Bible, she cried and cried and slept. And that when she lay down and slept, she just saw that a man entered the room, true story, reached his hand into her and brought out something. Ladies and gentlemen, when that woman got up, that was how that thing started shrinking and disappeared from her body. The race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. <clears throat> I will have mercy upon whom I will have mercy on. Some of you, let me tell you the truth. Right now, the situation you have found yourself, it is the mercy of God that you need. Some of you are doing well by yourself. Your major problem is your children. Some of you are not even doing well sincerely. It will take the grace of God. Now, please hear me. I told you that healing and provision it also extends to signs and wonders they are
they are manifestations of God's mercy. I have a covenant with God. I have read the scripture. I have a covenant of answered prayers with God. I will tell you this by the God of heaven. Please, if you are yet to submit your prayer request, is there anyone? I'd, okay. Go ahead. Please, ushers, because the next, the next five or so minutes will be a sense. Now you know what mercy is. In case you wrote it down and unbelief made you to remove some things, let me assure you, let your faith rise because God is about to surprise you. We are in the zone of mercy, so let there be no fear. The one who is merciful is also the all-powerful. I'm saying it again. If it means you writing something again, writing for your children. A group of very wealthy real estate people came and they demanded to see me and I said, what, what is this for? And they came and met me and they said, Apostle, we had a discussion and we came to the conclusion that we're going to have a covenant with God over you that anywhere on earth we build our estate, we must build a house for you there. This was some years ago. It's not something that is recent. I said, what is the meaning of this? What did I do? They said, this is our agreement with God. Wanted to look for something that represents the kingdom there. Anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I apologize if it sounds like pride or whatever. I cannot tell you how many estates these people have built today across Nigeria and Africa. And every, I've not gone to one of the houses to even check and say, this is my key. They just bring the papers and say, go and drop them. Go and drop them except the Lord builds a house. Don't you think I don't know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hallelujah. A group of business people came and met me and said, Apostle, we agreed that we're going to make you a non-executive board member. I said, what does that mean? Very big, we're not talking of small little companies. What is my own contribution? And they jokingly said, you represent the presence of God and the ark of God in that business. Okay, so what am I going to be doing? Praying for you? I can pray. I don't need to be any. I can just pray. Say, no, this is our conclusion. And the only thing I can say after that is to God be the glory. Can I tell you, everything you are looking for is also looking for you. But hear me, it takes the mercy of God. The mercy of God. I was living in a particular nation. This was like three, four years ago. I, I was done and... There were some American people who came. Uh, they were doing a partnership, a real estate partnership with the, the, that country. And the pastor and the group of business people, they just stood. I was hurrying up to go and rest and prepare, get to the airport and return back to the country. And they met us and they said, well, we are developing properties here. And we just want you to know that we have put five properties for you here. I said, five? Who are you people? What are you doing? Till today, I've not gone there to say, this is how my house is. A woman who relocated not too long ago to the UK from Ghana, just called me and they bring me papers and keys and the photo of a house. It will be like the, maybe the Ikoi or Leki now in Ghana. Magnificent structure. And said, the Lord said, I should give it to you. I'm leaving. I've not gone there. It was my protocol that when I was in Ghana, I said, you should just go and see it. I just know that God bless you is there. Whatever happens to it, just leave it there first. Have you read the scripture that says, when the Lord turn again, the captivity. I'm sorry if, I hope you, you are not misunderstanding what I just told you. Can I tell you, when the mercy of God rests upon your life, you will lay up gold as dust. Believe me when I tell you this. That what somebody is praying for, God will carry it and bring it to you and knock your door. And you will open it and you will see it like a parcel there. I'm saying that because something is about to rest. Be patient. The next two minutes here. I know that you've been praying. You've prepared for this meeting. Please don't waste your moment. Don't be like the man who the king leaned on and said, even if God will open the windows of heaven, must this happen? And he saw it but did not eat of it. 
please in one minute where's the prayer request have you dropped it we are going to pray in one minute I'd like you to pray from the depth of your heart father these that have written here arise in your mercy and let this be the last time I will write it as my prayer request please please make sure you are praying make sure you are praying take your eyes away from the limitations look on to the God of mercy who can visit men and turn their lives around someone is praying foundations of sapphire are you praying king's court are you praying you are praying this for your family bring your family in this prayer bring your children in this prayer your business your ministry I worship you, I worship you, you are here, mending broken hearts, I worship you, I worship you, way make a miracle walk, promise keep light in the darkness, that is who you are. We call you the way maker, miracle walker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. That is who you are. You are the covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping Yahweh, Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. In the name of Jesus, the ah, I sense such an anointing in this place. Do you know what I'm seeing in the spirit? I want you to write it down. I'm just seeing doors opening. Honestly, I stand by the God of heaven. Very strange doors opening. This is what I'm seeing. Some of you, you didn't even expect it. Some of you, is this week that is coming. We're not talking of something that is in the distance. Doors opening. Hear me. I wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll. 
and an elder tapped me and he said weep not for the lion of the tribe of judah the root of jesse is worthy it says and i looked upon the throne and i saw a lamb as though it had been slain having seven eyes and seven horns father i bow my knees to you oh god of my covenant and i declare i speak to you these egyptians you see today you will see them no more forever you will see them no more forever hear me every blessing comes from god through men to men from god through men to men there are times that god says yes but the human vessel who should partner with god for your testimony is not ready let me call them by prophecy anybody whether in lagos in nigeria or across the globe who has been anointed and mandated to partner with prophecy and has not responded to the voice of the spirit right now we compel them to partner with god hear me every door that has been closed over your destiny for a long time because I'm, I'm, I'm seeing doors. I'm still telling you. I'm, I'm seeing. Listen, do you know what a door is? A door is a device that midwives two rooms or two realms. Doors are the provisions that connect seasons. Midwifing one season to the other is a door. And if that door is closed, a season cannot come to an end for another one to open. Let me pray again. Anybody who is standing at the door and that door that opens you to the next season has refused to open by the power of the Holy Spirit. We open that door now. 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 Hear me? He said, go to the place where the roads divide. You will see a colt there that no man has ridden upon. He said, lose it. And if they ask you, I'm, I'm, seeing like, I'm seeing like fire just coming on like seven people. Just help them. I just saw that anointing right now. Right now. Just help them. You don't have to bring them out. But help them. Someone uh, is, is like a chain. That is breaking up someone's life right now. The Bible says he has broken the gates of brass. And cut the bands of iron in thunder. I stretch my hands right now. In the name of Jesus. Those chains be broken. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Everything that has tied you. And held you bound. Help that woman please. Be broken now. Help that woman please. Help them please. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen. Hear me. He said when they ask you, why are you losing a cold? That no one has ridden on it means there are virgin opportunities that no one has touched God kept listen even the owner of the cult has not ridden it that means there are people holding certain things it is not for them they are caretakers but at the command of the king he said release it and if they question you say it is a, a, a triumphant entry you cannot have a triumphant entry walking barefoot Therefore, I speak over your life. Anyone who has been made a caretaker over any blessing that should come to you, in the name of Jesus, may they release it for you now.
there is a woman here your right leg you've had severe pains just i'm feeling the pain right now as i'm standing just the right side who is that woman the lord wants to set you free now i don't intend to take so much time but i mean i i when i came in here i sense an investment of prayer and preparation i know that people have prayed and prepared believe in miracles so my dear look at me you love jesus what's your name i want to pray for you don't feel embarrassed eh? there is something that god is taking out of your life right now i stretch my hands and i curse every spirit huh i'm seeing limitation in the name of jesus be free right now by the power of the holy spirit what's your name my dear this lady shaking her head that for tomorrow who is Gladys what's your name where are you from I have to pray for you I'm not a prophet of doom eh? but I'm looking at you and I'm seeing your hands and feet tied in the spirit this is what I'm seeing you are a sincere lady, but there is no progress, no moving forward. People will promise to help you, and by the next day, they just... Let me prophesy to someone. If there is any embargo on your life that makes people desiring to help you, uh, help this woman, help that... Oh my God, please help her. In the name of Jesus, Abacatos Katibata, help them please. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, right now, I use Abacos Shekatea. Be free now! Be free now. Everything that has tied you that will not let you go forward by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Go forward now. Go forward now. I pray for all of you who are having pains in the name of Jesus. There are two people here. You saw me in your dream. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Just listen to what I'm saying first. You saw me in your dream. And in that dream, I was ministering to you. This is, this is something God wants to release you from. I'm going to pray for you right now. Please don't come out at random. Make sure that there's order in the house of God. Let's not come out at random. You don't have to come out. You can stand where you are. I presume that so many of you, because you've listened to the teachings, you, where, wherever you are, but I'm going to pray for you. Someone will shout right now, loud under the anointing. Aha, uh -huh, that's right. Something is happening here. Something, help them. Something is happening here. I'm seeing like angelic ministrations. H help them, please. Angel help them, please. Whether you are an usher or not, help them. I'm seeing angelic ministrations. These are they not ministering spirits. Send to minister to they that be the heirs of salvation. In the name of Jesus, we release the ministry of angels. We, we release the ministry of angels to families, to homes, to businesses. Help this woman. We release the ministry of angels right now by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Let there be healing right now. Every part of your limbs, let there be healing right now. I decree and declare if there is anything that is connected to witchcraft help this lady i remove that demonic thing from your body now for the bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father i declare let it be uprooted now please hear me do you know that many attacks on your health is actually an attack on your finances it's not really the health it is the supplies 
Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Thank you. Please, you can return to your seat. Just one last prayer and I'm done. Please, someone can come and help me pack this request. I want to pray over people here because the Lord is opening my eyes. I'm not a prophet of doom, but I'm seeing a casket like a coffin. And the Lord is saying I should rebuke the spirit of death. Do you know, let me tell you, there is a spirit that has been released across this nation. You have to pray. You see people just dying anyhow. People don't die anyhow. Oh, uh -uh. oh death, where is your sting? And no grave, where is your victory? The devil wants to just come and waste the lives of people just like that. I want to pray for you. And this extends for you and also your loved ones. Right now, anyone here, Shabrakatos Katebalakatos here, who is a victim or there is an operation of the spirit of death around your life, my God, I'm, I'm just sensing like fire leaving my hands. Lord, I don't know where they are. Help them, please. In the name of Jesus, I declare by the spirit of life and even by the mercy of God, be delivered from death now. Whether by accident, by the sword, by sicknesses, be delivered from death now. And if there is any stranger roaming around your body, in the name of a sickness or a terminal disease whether cancer whether hepatitis whether blood condition please in one minute rebuke it in one minute rebuke it i declare my liberty by the mercy of god in the name of jesus now i speak over your life that in the name of Jesus, beginning from now, a dimension of God's mercy you have not seen, may it begin to work for you. Mercy in your finances. Mercy in your spiritual life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Tomorrow morning, we're going to take the time. I want to share with you something from scripture. And then I'll have the time to just minister prophetically. And then we'll pray over the foundations of Sapphire. I asked the Lord something. I said, Lord, let not only few people testify. Let the entire foundations of Sapphire. Like you see people testifying every single one of them. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. And increase you. In Jesus name. Hold on, let me make an altar call. I know our time is up. You are saying, Apostle, I need Jesus. Just one minute for you before we wrap up. There's no need cajoling. You have seen what Jesus has done. Or you are saying, I need to rededicate my life. I don't want to play games with Jesus. His mercy is there. Even if it is one person, I sense in my spirit there has to be someone. Please come and stand here. Jesus is calling you. Do not miss out on that opportunity. Please don't play games with your destiny. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believes in him, the Bible declares, should not perish but have life everlasting. Come, come to Jesus. Win that war. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Are we celebrating them? They are coming to Jesus. Come. Come. You are giving him a chance to make you. You are giving him a chance to break you. If you are still joining them, please join. Young, old, all together, come to Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, I salute every one of you for this noble decision. Thank you. Please, may I request that you lift your right hand, if you can, high above your head. I want you to say this prayer. Please, if you are joining them, join them quickly. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I am broken and I need your mercy. I acknowledge that I cannot help myself, but I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus as my Savior, as my Lord, and as my King. 
I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I am a recipient of eternal life. I go from glory to glory and grace to grace. Amen. Father, thank you for these ones. By their declaration, I decree and declare that their sins are forgiven and that you give them a new beginning from today. It will go from glory to glory and grace to grace. For in Jesus' name, we pray. Now, a card will be given to you. There are counselors who are giving you the card. Please make sure you have one. And then um, we have a counselor waving her hand. Madam is waving her hands. May I request that all of you just follow the counselors. Let's celebrate them in one minute and you'll be back to your seat. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Please, let me encourage you. Do make the sacrifice to invite everyone that you can, particularly for tonight. Ask them to listen to this teaching, to bless them. And then please do all within your power to make sure that um, you are here in the morning. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.